I realized very late that design was a profession. Um, my um, idea was that uh, I could become an architect or a sculptor, an artist. Um, and both professions I, th I thought were very attractive, but I thought also that I should enter through the kind of back door and through craft. And my first training after leaving school was working for a furniture restorer, an antique furniture restorer. Then I moved to England where I did a, a, a training as cabinet maker, an apprenticeship. And it was really through this, um, through this apprenticeship that I discovered design, that making a piece of furniture, even as a craftsman, meant there was this phase before making, before starting to make, that is planning, that is trying to make sense of it all. And, and in a way, I would say today that this is, that was my discovery of design. Yeah, I, I opened my studio um, more or less straight away after leaving the Royal College in 1990. Um, well, half a year later, I, I had my own studio. And I think most people would probably guess that setting up your own business is difficult. The first years are difficult. In my memory, at least, it wasn't difficult at all. It was really what I wanted to do. And, and it was so clear to me what that was that I wanted to do. It was clear and simple. That means no setup, no equipment. Uh, basically, you start from nothing. And that was the beauty of this time. And I think why it felt so easy and 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 optimistic. It was just the beginning of computers. My first projects were all drawn on the drawing board with ink pens. And that made it slow. And of course, it made it very limited. It was purely a 2D kind of thinking almost. But there was model making. That was the, the, the way to visualize ideas in, uh, in, in three dimensions. And I did that. I always enjoyed it. And it's, it's even, it relates, of course, to my, my training as a craftsman, but even goes further back to, to childhood, um, just making things and, and finding out by making. I think that has continued even until today, and it's it's the kind of the saving the, the 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 kind of simplicity and immediacy of this method of a pair of scissors, paper, cello tape, putting something together. When I was a student, my idea of design, the kind of idea, uh, the kind of design I wanted to do, was really um, an idea of mass production. It was a naive idea. And what is mass anyway? I learned my lesson very quickly that the industry that I worked for was not producing any masses anyway. The idea of one for all is not true anymore. Industry, that means standardization, churning out products, many of the same for everyone is, is, an, old, is an old concept. Um, the beauty is that industry now produces diversity, variety, and, and industry is able to almost customize a um, project, but still on an, on an industrial scale. Objects are dead things. But it's amazing how we, with some products, we really build up a relationship. We care for them. We, we just, they make, us feel good and and I think that is the that's the real quality of a, of a, of a product um, and that's what will eventually make them last for a very long time that's what eventually makes them be very ecological I think all of the the, the, the kind of the classics uh, the great masterpieces in design history they have this quality they have they have this kind of magic touch that 
makes us really like them but not it's not only beauty it's not only function but something that um makes us identify with them on 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 another level on a, on a very personal level there is two products that are probably the most well known um and even commercially the most successful products of mine the mayday lamp for floss that came out in 1999 and um just five years later the chair one for magis and i would say that what connects both projects is that they were both very personal products projects um projects that mm, really came from from within me some it was they were things that i i almost felt an urge doing which is not true for everything and it i think it's it doesn't have to be um i think as a designer we always identify personally with the projects we do but it's not necessarily that um i'm i'm using my job to realize my own projects normally it comes from companies briefings discussions but these two particular projects mayday and chair one were things that i just felt i wanted to do mayday as a lamp that belonged to my way of of life i wasn't interested in the um any common ritual of what life meant living at home and there would be there's the kitchen table and above the kitchen table is a lamp of some kind i was interested in in just you know a lamp a tool very independent of how it is used where it is used even in terms of what it looked like it had no clear typology or definition but something in how what it looks like tells you what you can do with it and i think it it worked and it worked not only for me but other people seem to to be able to read the product into what it can do and and therefore invent how they how they use it it's one of those projects that i i every now and then i get emails with pictures sent from people that show me their mayday lamp and how they use it and it's very nice chair one of course was a a a a different project not more much more challenging because it's a chair to start with a chair is always difficult this project started with material and technology and and that this kind of initial the 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 kind of the the magic word the aluminum casting which is the material and technology that came from magis they gave that to me as a as a form of briefing aluminum casting is is common in furniture the aluminum group from eames uses aluminum castings but its components uh, that's very common but my idea of making the whole chair or let's say the whole sheets seat shell from die cast aluminum i think it was a, a a kind of something in between being totally naive at that time and um being totally just eager and enthusiastic and and we did it and uh, of course doing a project like that and made a the same thing it needs the partnership with the right company a company that can um kind of read into the potential of an a very early idea to you know to have the, that kind of breath of going through four years of development failures also it's not a it's not a straight line development it's is one that um, at times is very difficult and costly and uncertain and um i think we were all just driven by the excitement of making something that felt right chair one development falls into 
this time in my studio when we really changed from using computers 2D only to using computers 3D. And the computer played a very kind of significant role in the development of Chair One, but only ever in relation or combination with physical model making. We used the computer as a device to record data, information, and, and help the model making um, process. Chair One creates a very three-dimensional shape of a seed shell, but that is made from flat planes. And these flat planes that comes from our model making, it was easier to make flat planes than um, curved planes. I thought that this chair would definitely be for outdoors. Aluminium is a material that is perfect for outdoors because it doesn't corrode. And I had an interest in uh, making a chair not for indoors, not for the home, not for an indoor space, but a chair that would read against a completely different background or backdrop, a piece of furniture that you would read against a building, against nature, a tree, a tarmac, an urban landscape. So I guess that the, the design, the, the, the way chair one looks was also informed by, by that, by a, a more a rougher aesthetic of, of something that I imagined as an urban landscape, but also the rougher conditions of what my chair had to perform within. So uh, vandalism or even just dirt, rain, um, even heat. By cutting out so much material and leaving just the outline of my grid meant very little material to get dirty, very little material to get hot or cold no surfaces for the rainwater to stay. All, all those kind of things also informed chair one. We believed in the chair and we thought it was something that was valid, a valid proposal and a serious proposal of something to, you know, to sit on a chair. But we, we never thought it was quite, uh, it would ever be quite that successful, which is now 10 years um, that the chair is on the market. And it took a while, it took maybe two years from the launch of the chair until it started selling. And, and the real kind of the break, the breakthrough came through the De Young Museum, a museum in San Francisco built or designed and built by Herzog and Dumeron architects. And they used a chair for the museum cafe and it was the pictures, I mean, for most people, it was the pictures of, of the museum that went through the, the, all the design and architectural press, seeing this fantastic building with my chair. And, and I think the, the, the building or the, the, the kind of the context of the building gave my chair the kind of the, the credibility that it's, it's not only a, a crazy chair or a nice chair to look at, but it, was, it, it suddenly became real. And from then on, the chair really sold in a constant number. I sometimes hear that that um, it takes time for my products to be to be understood or liked. Um, it never worried me that it takes time um, if in the end something does happen and, and, and what happens doesn't necessarily mean that everyone has to like them. I think it's quite good and necessary for products, for anything to be, you know, to be something that, I don't know, um, challenges a, an opinion, a judgment, because we don't want to live in a kind of comfortable bubble of everything that is just beautiful and so comfortable and so um, yes, we've seen it. We like it. It's, um, I think, the power of an object that 
makes you think is, is something that I want to explore. We do design products that have a function and, and, um, and serve a certain purpose. But each purpose can be questioned. Um, and, and, and that's what I'm interested in. Probably it's what has drawn me to design from that very beginning is that design is so closely related to life. And life is beautiful. Life is, um, life is the inspiration, everyday life. And I think I've always been, probably always been someone who enjoys being the observer, um, sitting, sitting there and just looking, watching. And it's exactly that which I think you do as a designer, you do observe and the, 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 the observation is a form of thinking, thinking about um, how things work, but also, of course, how things don't work, how they fail. There was a time in the 90s where design, the, the terminology design became inflationary. It was used for all of the bad things, um, all of the banalities of kind of everything became design. I think that term of design thinking brings the, the, the kind of discipline of design back to something which I think it really is something very, um, very sincere, very demanding, including even innovation, making big leaps, changing the rules. It includes also a kind of a certain risk for failure. Um, you do that, and if, if it doesn't work, you go back, you rethink, and you learn from that. The good thing um, over all those years, work has never become a routine. I, I still don't know how, how projects really, how a project will work. Um, it's always a new discovery and, and, and finding out. And, and I guess that's, makes, that's, what makes it, um, that's what makes it exciting. And um, I realize that looking at very old work, there was a beauty in the in the simplicity and probably the the the, the way of direct, the, the kind of immediacy that these old projects had, that I may have lost over years, and I'm probably now in a phase where I'd, I'd rediscover that. And I think that with all the technologies and complexities, and even opportunities I have in my career, I, I the, the greatest challenge is actually making very simple things and, and going back to not the roots, and it's not going back backwards, but going back to something that seems so essential and pure. <laughs>